What is going on, my homies? I got my buddy Rob here, who you are gonna see in the video real quick. But I have another boat walkthrough, hunt for the perfect bass boat, whatever you wanna call it, because as I've told you before, I'm in search of the perfect bass boat because I've finally saved up enough money where I'm going to get a boat. And you can see the subject matter that we're gonna be talking about right behind me. It is a Phoenix, and you guys have talked a lot about this boat in the comments. And what we're gonna do, Rob actually works for MLF. He's an epic camera guy. Rob, what's your Instagram? Rob Matsura, R-O-B-M-A-T-S-U-U-R-A. Rob is what I would call a fishing artist. Some of the shots, some of the video, the drone video he gets are absolutely amazing and probably some of the best highlights of how cool our sport is. So go check him out, give him a follow. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of throw 20 questions at Rob, ask him what he likes about the boat, how it lays out, how it rides, and get a feel for kind of what a Phoenix has to offer in this this gamut of bass boats that we're looking at. So hit that like and subscribe button and let's go talk to Rob and uh, talk about this Phoenix. Rob is kind of a little hippie, dude. He's, a, he's one of my good buddies, but he always comes over to my house and crashes and tells me all kinds of cool fishing stories and stuff. But Rob, tell me, let's talk boats instead of fishing. What, um, what are the specs on this? What are we actually looking at? It's a 21 foot, 2021 Phoenix PHX. 21 PHX. Uh, okay. What's the beam on it? 96. 96. Uh, 21 six long length. And, yeah, 250 Pro XS. 250 Pro XS. Yeah. You got double poles on the yeah. back. Is that a stock paint job too? Is this one of like the normal colors that they do? I have been seeing a lot of this like scheme. You know, the last one I had it was a red and black, red and gray, and that was seemed like the scheme. But this year, like uh, I was at the MLF uh, championship, and there was a lot of boats this color scheme. But I like it. It's pretty. It's different, I think, for this year at least. So we're not gonna spend as much time on the outside as we do with some of the other boats because the, the trailers are pretty stock. You know, It's a tandem trailer, 21 foot boat, pretty standard. But one cool thing about Rob is he travels all over. And when I say all over, he probably puts on, you think more miles than a pro? Like, just as much or more, just but that's mainly because I'm from California. So. Uh, that's right. He's, he's so cool, so woke, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I guess that's a good test though. So you would say what you put on, like 30,000 miles or something like that? Like uh, la The last one, the same trailer, same boat, I probably put on like 50 or 60. And it was Thousand? Wasn't, it wasn't, it's not just, it wasn't just, uh, like highway stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go on some adventure. Yeah, you go on some back road. <laughs> Rob, like, I say it actually affectionately. Rob is a bit of a hippie, dude. He loves to go camping and stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute, but he gets into some, like, backwater crazy areas to get some cool shots. But one thing that kind of tells you is the trailer can hold up. If you could put 40, 50,000 K on a trailer, that thing's made to run. Hey, Bog, what do you say we jump on in this boat? You want to get in? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. All right. He has the 250 Pro XS, great motor, Mercury. He's got the twin blades on the back. But once again, this has just a standard, it's a, a manual, I guess you'd call it, jack plate. Rob, this is one of the things that I'm kind of thinking about as an add-on. You know, I do fish Florida a lot. Why don't you have a hydraulic jack plate on there? On my boat, it's a staff boat, so I could, it's also a backup boat for, say, if anglers need to use it, some of the pros on the pro circuit, and everything, all the uh, sub boats have to be exactly the same. Okay, so they're like so, super so, stock, So basically. it's pretty stock. I mean, it's nice, but it's stock. Like, I can't have a jack plate on it because the other boats don't have a jack plate. So ideally, though... But you, if I have it, yeah. My last it. year's boat did have it, and it, it was really nice. It's really nice. It's really nice, yeah. It not only helps you, like, in shallow water, but my top end speed, you know, you could adjust it while you're getting on plane and going. Like, the last one that I had... I got it to 78 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah. This one I haven't really ran like real hard or fast, but this one goes about like 74 with that where it's at. I haven't messed with the jack plate yet, but might mess around with it and see what's up. So Rob, that's another quick question that I have then. So your last boat, was it pretty much the same at 21 foot? It, it was the same exact thing except for the model no name was different. It used to be the 921 PHX, I okay. believe. And, but the whole, everything is the same except for they updated a lot of things, that little features that okay. make it just a lot, little better. A but lot I better. guess from a like a top end standpoint, like we can ballpark your like 75, 78. Like if you had that that mm -hmm. hydraulic jack plate, like you can... She can cook, I guess, is yeah. basically. Yeah, she, this she phone is a fast boat. It's a fast, fast boat. boat. 
which kind of moves to another question that I have. We're going to get onto the inside stores and the way he's got it laid out. But one thing that I do know about a Phoenix, and actually, well, you know Kevin Stewart, right? I do know Kevin Stewart. The first Phoenix I was ever in was Kevin Stewart. He's a West Coast angler, super cool dude, was his Phoenix. And it was out on Okeechobee. There were four and a half foot rollers, and Kevin's going like 55, 60 miles an hour, dude. And we're about to cut into the lake. And I'm like, Kevin, dude, like, it's rolling. It's rolling. And he looks at me, and he's like, don't worry about it. Dude, I'm like grabbing the old bleep handles, like just freaking out. Dude, we hit those first two waves and literally nothing happened. The boat cut right through them. So my first experience with the Phoenix is it rides super duper clean through the, the big chop, the little chop. It's it's a big water boat, even if you don't have the 21 foot size. What's your take on how, how it runs? Because I know you're on the St. Lawrence a lot. I'm on Ontario. St. Lawrence is the same thing as Ontario. Great okay. Lakes and it's like this is by far the and I'm not selling boats I'm not sponsored right, specifically right. by the boat but like yeah it's a good I've been in all boats because I'm you know on the MLF tour and I got to ride in everybody's boat and you don't even have to you don't have to drive it like real like you know steering waves and stuff and it's still pretty smooth but if you actually do drive it's like it's pretty incredible yeah so it's pretty awesome dry boat. too it's a dry boat too Unless, I mean, wind. Well, yeah, that, yeah. that's always but, yeah. the trait. That kind of leads to one thing, and I'm going to throw this out there as a negative right off the bat for, for one of my negatives. And I, it's not Rob's negative, but this is something because I am a wild flipping machine. It has higher gunnels, which you can see right here. They're probably about six and a half, seven inches high. That is super great for a dry ride. It is super bad for someone like me that donks his one and a half on, the, on the, like, the gunnel of the boat all the time. So that's one thing that I don't totally like. I like to be a little more in touch with the water but you get a benefit out of it because you get that cleaner ride so let's start with the front of the boat kind of doing the layout basically this deck is gigantic it's a little bit skinnier than say the nitro i think and maybe like maybe like a falcon or something like that but from a length wise there's a lot of deck here to be had so you have a what do you call it a, a submerged or like a, a recessed trolling motor pedal this is your mount for your if you want to do double electronics there's a huge kind of fiberglass black bracket you can put it right in there you got the ghost in there you got your twin foot pedals for the uh power poles and then you got tilt trim why don't you show me these rod lockers dude they look absolutely the gigantic Man. Oh, that's so the new feature about this okay it's the spring so they pop closed yeah, yeah before on the last one i had the the turn ones i love these because that's a huge headache dude i trip oh, over them all the time dude just, yeah. so it pops right open yeah so you do have rod organization do. Most set people in take here them out, i just left them in you left them in. i'd be one that would take them out too but you can get how many rods have you gotten in here i get about i mean i i live on the road i can't bring all my roads so <laughs> put about like 15 15 that's 15. pretty good yeah. but that's a lot of space a lot of opening too this yeah. is a longer rod locker than i'm used to and there's actually some space back in there behind where you can oh, actually wedge enough, yeah. like a there's you, this is an extra i don't know if are we skipping around uh yeah let's you skip to it fight. dude put more rods in here if you want are you serious so you almost yeah. have like a co-angler rod storage dude you can yeah that is one thing I'll note. So the second Phoenix that I was on is um, my buddy Donnie Bass's. Uh, go check him out. He's a super good dude down in Florida. One of my very, very close friends. But one thing that I noticed about the Phoenix, uh, for as much as the gunnels are a little high, whatever, the storage layout is by far the best, most how do you bet it's well thought out storage that, that you find on a bass boat just because they use every inch of space to, to stash something and with me with all my cameras with all the rods that i bring tackle for florida for georgia for alabama that's actually that's a really big deal to me so let's take a look at this let me back up the and main, the, main the main section right here right bob here. can you excuse us so we yeah. actually we can probably like fit like bog in there yeah, dude you know there's a lot of boats that have like separate ones i love the the single one big single Come i agree on. with you 100 percent. scooch ball dude th this dog is not wanting he wants Come the on. boat dude he's yeah. this isn't gonna work i think this is the boat this is it all right all right yeah. so dude that is gigantic it, it's big it was big so you have the same i guess it's kind of the standard is to have this sort of channeled storage in all these yeah. new bass boats there is a like a sliding little tray that comes in like it. a separator I, I took it out because I like because it's used in MLF I have to take my stuff out a lot okay so, like this is a big Rubbermaid container that has all my soft plastic right I should do it. Let's see, let's see 
That is a lot of space. You can see he has some diving stuff. Go on his Instagram. Rob has some like absolutely amazing videos, like National Geographic stuff, where he's basically swimming with smallmouth. Like swim. down there swimming like. I swim just as much as I fish. <laughs> But yeah, look at this is a this is a rubber made tip. Why don't you just crawl in there, right? You can, but look. Oh dude, I had no idea it was that deep. Check yeah. this out guys. That that's like all of my Check arm almost. This dude, look how big that rubber made is. Plastic. And that drops all the way down in there. Yeah, like and that goes all the way up to there. So I will throw oh, another yeah. critique too. So this is interesting because the nitro that we did had the same little issue. They stopped the storage up there, but at least on this Phoenix, they actually have rod guides, like little holes so you can do rod guides um, up in the tip. But I did notice on a lot of these boats, they put that, that sort of close on the on the edge of the container which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because i'm one that wedges life jackets cushions things along those lines and i like having that extra space but that thing is smack down gigantic dude this is really clean for me right now usually <laughs> there's a sleeping bag clothes like all this yeah i've lived in the, this model boat for a total of five straight days so so I don't know how many people. We're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this really quick because I'm gonna we're gonna come back to the other storage. But do you see this back deck right here? So when I was talking to Rob before we started shooting the video, he's like, "Bro, Mikey, like I love this boat because my tent fits on the back of the boat." I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about, Rob?" He's like, "Dude, I'd pitch my tent back here, right? Literally, you've camped yeah. on the back of your boat." We'll have to pop in some photos. We have a segmented rod. We'll just call it a rod locker. A segmented rod locker. Um, same kind of size storage. Are they divided? Divided. Uh, is there a divider yeah, right a divide. here? Okay, so these are separated. Okay, so this could you almost could, double as a cooler it, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Cooler. I use the day box, like put all. Actually, I put my camera stuff in there usually. Yeah, that's probably a good idea because there's no carpet, no yeah, dampness. Where my life jackets go, clothes. My laptop actually goes in here when I go hit the road. This is my tent right here. <laughs> a little packable. <laughs> So if you want to go like hippie on the road fishing, this yeah. is the boat for you. And then you have your light storage right there. Is the, the anchor light back there, is it in one of the rod lockers or do you just like lay it down there? I, I think I laid it in there. You lay it in there. But one thing that's new that I like about it, they have it on Rangers too, is you don't need this. You don't need the... It's oh, it's got the in, little the nose on tip. The side yeah, and yeah. Light, so you don't have, I love that. My boat has that I too. Love that. All right, so let's slide on down. Why don't you grab a chair for me here real quick, Rob? And I'm going to sit down right next to you. No homo. Are we going to? Let's, but, let's uh, go for a ride. Yeah, let's go for a ride. Tell me a little bit about your captain's seat, how this thing lays out. You got a hot foot down there, I can but, see. Yeah. All right. Super simple. Like all graph. I've seen pros that have two graphs. It fits perfectly on this dash. But like in general, all the latches, everything's super like simple, like easy to fix. It's not like touch screen and stuff like right, that. Right, they're just know? standard like little standard, toggle yeah. turnover switches and that's and that. what, Like when I first got it, I was like, oh, I thought it'd be, you know, a little bit more fancy. But right. All the pros, it's better that way. Just I, I agree like with if you. Something happens to go wrong. Electronic like buttons like that go wrong, it dude. I've heard happen. horror stories about the Rangers, yeah. like yeah. not starting and stuff like that. So you have a, a standard throttle right and there. Throttle. Um, you have the blinker that's just for your tilt and trim because yeah. you don't have the hydraulic jack plate. Had, Seats are new. These are well different than my last. The uh, I had a 2017, same model, but the, the seats are a little different. A little bit more flat right here. Okay. The other ones were more curved a little bit. I like I how they're like kind of bucketed, dude, because it kind of, yeah. you know, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And the problem usually when you're in the captain's seat is you don't really have anything to grab onto just in case. You know, you're supposed to grab the steering wheel, <laughs> but both of these seats have a grabber on each side right yeah. here. And I guess let's move then. We have what I, the glove compartment, but for lack of a better word. New thing about this. Snaps again. Could lock. Oh, oh sweet. Yeah. All right. So that's just a plastic storage. Awesome yeah. for storing phones and that. You don't have yeah. any storage on on that side over there, uh, right? Just like a little day uh, tray, okay. cup holder, just to put some rando yeah. stuff. Ice All right. Chest. So let's jump into the ice chest then. So this is a little different because there's literally one, two, three segments. So open them up and show me kind of how you got right. it laid out. Ice Cooler. Chest. All mm -hmm. right. And stays pretty cold. I've had ice in there for couple days because <laughs> <laughs> you're camping <laughs> <laughs> Rob's such yeah, a yeah. hippie dude yeah, but like oh the, I like I that yeah you know one Kinda thing like we've on talked side. about um Jacob yeah. mentioned it and we talked about it on the nitro is having those tools away so you're not tripping yeah. over them that's actually a really big deal yeah. so you have a measuring board right measuring here above board. so that pulls yeah. out for easily measuring fish what are these two little trays little like I have I, cool. I, I use them for like spraying like my old like when I'm cut changing baits and stuff 
you know, I don't really want to throw them in my box all wet yet, you know, so then I just throw them in there. That is baits. cool. Usually it's like trash or something, but they come out, you clean it. Oh, that is sweet, dude. That's a big really deal. Nice. One thing really unique to the Phoenix is the rod storage stuff for the co-angler. And we showed you guys this guy right here, which can double as a rod storage thing or whatever kind of storage that you want. But the other thing is an open air rod storage kind of I don't know apparatus and it basically you lay the rods up that rail right there but it's super handy has a little elastic thing on there but it really helps you to keep your or helps your co-angler keep their stuff organized and not getting tangled i've oftentimes fished with donnie i'm uh, fishing the roland martin marine series and that and i'm a terrible co-angler like I, I catch some fish i usually catch one big one for them but i'm a terrible co-angler in the sense that i bring a lot of rods with me and this is the one boat where i've stored my rods and i can access any rod that I want, whether it's on the bottom or on the top, they don't get tangled. So let's slide on to the back and take a look at the live wells right here. Same spring latch. Love it. Dude, those are actually They're pretty gigantic. Big. They're pretty big. Those would fit my size fish. Those are pretty cool. Does it have any added like crazy oxygenator feature I things don't have or any of that? One here. It's just aerator and pop. I don't have I don't think I have the did you put this on there? I did not. I oh, that's cool. So oh, that's for, for the, your culling tags yeah. right there. I haven't fished any tournaments in this boat yet, so. That's actually really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's oh. jump over to the side storage then. The one thing, actually, I think this is a little frustrating to me because usually they use their storage better, but I believe this whole gas strip tank. is the gas tank. Yeah. yeah, so that's the gas tank on the Phoenix. And so we got our storage. Are these as deep as that middle storage that which you're showing me? All right, we'll take a look at this one. Let's pop her open. Oh, Holy. Yeah, yeah, that's, dude, that's dude, super that's deep. Super dry. Little tray, yeah. like tray kind of thing right there. So they are super dry. They're super dry. I put my laptop, this is either here or up front. That's where I put my laptop when I live in my boat. That <laughs> is really <laughs> nice. And then, so these are the new locks. They're kind of a yeah, different latch instead of having the latch on here where it goes under sort of. Really yeah. Good. And actually I broke quite a few of those on my Triton. So that is actually a really nice yeah. feature. Let's jump into the back. Let's see if he has Battleborn batteries in here. So. I wish it did. <laughs> you wish it did. That is the one thing that I am excited about is putting lithiums in my new boat because I'll um, we'll pimp that thing out. But let's take a look at what you got back here. Right. So we got our motor well. So this has trays. trays. Those are super sweet. Put Pretty much standard kind of for boats now. Dude, she is laid out super duper clean. It's super, it, it's, so I had battery issues in, when I, in the beginning, but taking them in and out, everything's super easy to take out a lot of room like yeah this, you can get to like, your your straps really <laughs> easily stuff, but like, look at that. yeah you which, got prop storage you right add there another battery uh, yeah which is actually what i'm going to be doing it looks like is that a jump starter kit or oh that's your fuses back yeah, in there so now. fuses and then is that a master switch do you have a jumper on here this, or no i don't have a jumper but this is yeah this is just master master and then i got a trolling motor switch okay. so it's a pretty good layout onboard super accessible onboard charger oh it's it's wedged back in there that's a little dual pro back in there that is pretty pretty nice i like the accessibility of the batteries that's one one fault that i have with my triton is my batteries even though i have those nice battleborn lithiums they're sort of wedged under here part of it's because my boat's a little bit smaller but it's very hard to reach and change out batteries and what ends up happening is your entire wrist comes out bloody when you try to do that because you're reaching under stuff trying to pull it out and it's uh it's a little bit frustrating what do you think of this boat is this bog ball? Oh, it's a bog ball, bog ball. This is good ball for bog. Yes, it's very good. Oh, it's a little belly rub on the Phoenix. Ooh. The thing with Rob that I really relate to is me and Rob both love to fish, but we both love to do a lot of camera stuff. He obviously does much higher end camera work than I do, but we, we find it relatable in that we're, we're toting a lot of gear and a lot of gear that needs to be stowed and protected. And you were just telling me one of the things that you really love about this boat is what? Compartment size there's not one single compartment that I think like, oh, I wish that compartment was like a little bigger, you know, or a little smaller. Like every compartment is the right size, fits anything you want. Like I fit a lot of stuff in this boat. Well, I literally you're on the road all the time, yeah, man. So you live like, out of everything it. Everything that I own is in my truck or my boat. So, it, you know, and if I hit the lake for, you know, four days straight or something and I'm living in it, I bring everything out of my truck and put it in there because I don't want to leave my laptop my hard drives in my truck at the boat launch i bring them in there so right <laughs> and i pack it up everything's loaded yeah close everything it fits at like all the compartments are perfect size we're gonna wrap this video up but i gotta show you 
El Bog. <laughs> He's I like totally Bog, chilling. Bog picked the boat already. Yeah, I think Bog did pick the boat. Bog, is this the boat for you? We can't go 21. 21's a little big, but but this might be this might be something to look at. I appreciate you guys commenting so much though and telling me to go check out a Phoenix. This is definitely something on my list. I love the storage. I don't like the gunnels. I love the storage, and I know the ride on this thing is absolutely smooth, which is is really a big deal with some of the places I fish. Gunnersville, Gunnersville gets crazy when they start when the wind blows against the current and that Okeechobee and that. But Rob, I appreciate it, dude. Walk me through the boat. Check this guy out, though. He shoots things that make our sport look epic, as epic as I think it is. Like beautiful photos, beautiful videos. It really represents what I feel when I'm out there. Wow, emotions, feeling. Where can they find your Instagram in that? Rob Matsura. Rob Metzler. I'll put a link to it down in the description box. But make sure to drop some comments down there. Let me know what you think of the Phoenix. Let me know if there's another boat that we should be looking at. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because, as you know, this is a grassroots channel which YouTube does not like. So your support goes a long way. We'll see you back out on the water and maybe looking at another one of these beautiful things. But <laughs> what are you doing, Buck? <laughs> Tight lines, guys. Oh,